Hello, welcome back. Um, now I would like to go through some basic stability definitions. Um, and what I mean by this is if we're given one of our nonlinear systems in standard form, so we have a system x dot is equal to f of x u and y is equal to g of x u. Uh, what does it mean for this system to be stable um, when you're near to an equilibrium point? And we've already sort of seen some clues that a slightly more sophisticated stability definition will be required than normal. When we were studying uh, phase portraits, remember those annoying special cases where our linearization, the A matrix in our linearization had imaginary um, eigenvalues, then we weren't able to conclude anything about what was going to happen um, because the linear term wasn't dominating um, all of the nonlinear terms. And uh, so clearly our notion of stability needs to be refined a little bit from the uh, linear case. And that's what I want to talk about today. Um, should be noted that we're going to go through some definitions and try and give some intuition behind them, but these are not definitions that we're really going to be working with um, to any great level of sophistication in this course. It's just to sort of expose you to these, uh, these ideas and um, give you a, a feel for how you might go about defining the notion of stability in the nonlinear case. Um, so it's just a good thing to be aware of. So we'll start by just building a wish list of uh, properties of stability or what, what we might like for stability. Um, and then uh, we'll try and give some corresponding uh, mathematical descriptions of those, and those will be our stability definitions. So uh, we're talking about an equilibrium point, so um, we want to understand, uh, to understand uh, stability around an equilibrium point, which is just a pair of vectors x star u star such that f of x star u star equals zero. So we have a vector x star and u star such that if we are in those points x dot will be equal to zero and so we won't be going anywhere. And so that's what it means to be an equilibrium point. Now we want to ask the question if we take a small step away or a big step away will we come back and try to capture these ideas mathematically? So um, uh, the first item in our wish list might be, um, so if delta u is equal to zero, so we're not applying any extra inputs around our equilibrium input. Um, if delta x is zero is small, so this means that at time t is equal to zero, the distance away from our equilibrium point is small. Then delta x of t stays small. So informally, this, this is just saying that if we, we, we take a, an equilibrium point of our system, if we don't do anything to keep us in that equilibrium point, and we just perturb ourselves slightly away from that equilibrium point, will the, our state variable stay close? And everything's very informal here. Obviously, we need to pin down really what we mean by close here. So this might be our first desirable notion for um, understanding stability of the equilibrium point. And we could say that if we do stay close, then the equilibrium point is stable. Um, it turns out for nonlinear systems, a slightly um, uh, more, maybe a, a slightly better thing to ask for might be that if um, delta x zero is small, and again we don't apply any inputs, then delta x of t tends to x star. So this is saying something a little bit stronger. It's saying that if we start close, then we actually tend towards our equilibrium point x star. So this might be another desirable uh, feature of uh, the desirable thing about stability of an equilibrium point. So here, if you start close, you stay close. If you start close, you tend to the equilibrium point. And then finally, and really very usefully, 
uh, we would like to maybe have some notion of a uh, region of attraction. We've already seen in some of our examples, equilibrium points might just have um, some area of the state space where if you start there, you'll tend to that equilibrium point, and if you go too far away, you'll wander off somewhere else, perhaps even to another equilibrium point. And so having some idea of what the small here means, for example, um, in a quantitative way, could be a very, could provide good insights about um, our nonlinear system. And this is something we're going to get back to in future lectures, really, but we'll just sort of lay some of the foundations um, for that here. So how are these three notions typically captured um, or turned into a definition of stability? Um, well, let's take the first one. So the first one is typically turned into a notion of what's called local stability. And if we try to turn this sort of text into a formal uh, uh, or a more formal um, definition, what we might say is that if um, we, we could define local stability to be in, as follows. So we could say our equilibrium point, x star u star, is stable, and here by stable we mean locally stable, so if for every, and then let's say capital R greater than zero, there um, exists a small r that's greater than zero, such that and now we're going to write our mathematical statement that's trying to capture this idea of starting close and staying close. So, and the way we do that is we put in the length of our uh, vector of delta x's. So delta x1, 0 squared, plus delta x2 squared of time t is equal to 0, and so on. So this is just the length of our initial condition. So if we say the length of our initial condition is less than small r, this implies that the length of our state vector um, measured, in any other, any, measured at any other point in time is also small. So delta x1 of t squared plus delta x2 of t squared and so on. And this is less than our capital R for all positive times. So if we were to turn this little uh, definition into a picture, um, let's imagine that we have a two-dimensional system again, and then we have these two circles, our first one of radius small r, and then let's have our second one of radius big r. And then what this statement here says is that if we start inside this small circle, so our initial condition is some point in the state space here, and let's just put on, so we've got two dimensions, so these axes are x1 and x2, then as time evolves, we'll get pushed around our state space, we'll follow some trajectory, so this is a trajectory delta x of t, let's put deltas on those, because um, the origin is our equilibrium point, and this, um, all this definition says that is, if we start in this small ball R, we stay inside um, another ball of radius R. And more, more than that, given a large ball of any size, there will always exist um, an initial condition such that the trajectory will stay there in, uh, for all future times. So by shrinking um, this big R ball down, we can say that given a sufficiently small initial condition, will always stay sufficiently small for whatever sufficiently small is. And uh, so this is uh, what we would call by, low, mean by local stability. So given like a sufficiently small initial condition, will stay um, extremely small. So this is capturing our first idea here. Um, our second idea is normally turned into a different, definition called 
local asymptotic stability. And this is a, strike, uh, a slight strengthening of uh, the definition of local stability. So we say that x star u star is, and it's often abbreviated, LAS for locally asymptotically stable. Um, if it is stable, so first of all, if point one holds, um, and there exists an epsilon greater than zero, such that and now we again put some bound on the size of our initial condition. A deviation from our equilibrium point, we say that's less than epsilon. And this implies that delta xt tends to x star of t as t goes to infinity. So this is just kind of a very uh, clumsy but more rigorous way of writing out our requirement here. So our equilibrium point is locally asymptotically stable. If it's stable and if in addition, if we start close enough, so there exists some region um, with radius uh, small epsilon here, such that if we start in that region, so we start, we imagine this is like our epsilon ball now rather than our R ball, then our, our trajectory is guaranteed to tend to um, the equilibrium point as time gets very large. And then finally we have our um, notion of the size of a region of attraction, and for that today we'll make things extremely brutal. Um, and we'll try to turn this into a notion of um, globally asymptotically stable. And the definition this time is um, that x star u star is globally asymptotically stable, and this is gas. Um, if it is LAS, and for all initial conditions, delta xt goes to our equilibrium point as t gets large. And so this is just a, a kind of a, an extreme strengthening, so we say the equilibrium point is globally asymptotically stable if, no matter what the initial condition is, we tend to the equilibrium point. And you could try to imagine all sorts of um, regions in between, and we'll get onto that in, in the next lecture, actually. Um, so we have the one extreme where we're stable, and stability here means that given a tiny perturbation, it has to be finite, but it can be arbitrarily small, then we'll either stay small or will tend to our equilibrium point. And then we have the other extreme of globally asymptotically stable, where no matter where we start, we'll tend to the equilibrium point. And then you could imagine building intermediate regions of different shapes and things on top of this to really pin down what it means to have a region of attraction. And we'll get onto that soon. Um, but uh, here are your stability definitions. Um, it's maybe worth uh, making a few comments about what it would mean for linear systems. Well, given a linear system, um, LAS and GAS are equivalent. So if something is locally asymptotically stable, it's globally asymptotically stable. And uh, maybe something for you to think about is what do you think of the difference between local stability um, when restricted to linear systems or local, asymptotically st um, uh, local, as local asymptotic stability when restricted to linear systems? What, sort of different, what difference uh, do you think this um, corresponds to? Anyway, definitions, now you've seen them, and uh, we can move on.